How's it going guys? My name is Savarish and this is my second channel. If you're looking for the main channel, this isn't it, but here we do a lot of off the cuff and behind the scenes stuff that you might see on the first channel. Now, a lot of you have seen something very, very cool. I think it's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life and it is this. All right, so three, two, one. Whoops, hold it. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That sounds good! <laughs> Dude, what? It's an RC controller, and uh, yes, it actually is a real McLaren diagnostics uh, piece of equipment. That's and right. th this was loaned to us uh, by, uh, well, by, by someone. It, it, no, it no, no, absolutely not. So um, this is actually very cool because this is the only RC controller that controls a P1 engine. If you look at that, that is a throttle body. And if I do this, and that is the coolest thing in the world. Okay, now if you've seen that episode, and I certainly hope you did, then you'll know this guy. This guy's name is Eric Cruz, uh, and uh, he runs a company called Vanquish Tuning, and he is a complete master when it comes to uh, wiring and integrating stuff. Now, he's not gonna say that, but I will. I'll say that about him because he did something that was awesome. So um, what he's gonna do now, actually what we're gonna do, is we're gonna just show you what it actually takes to not only get this car running like on a bare bones uh, sort of wiring harness, but also to get it running with an RC controller. Um, I know that a lot of people were asking about how we did it and then now we, we explain it. This is gonna get really technical. So if you don't wanna see some technical stuff, we're gonna need to talk about wiring and... What? Nothing. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be technical, all right? What, what'd you do? Okay, so this started out as like, a joke. Uh, originally, uh, we we're gonna set up the car so you can turn on, rev it, and yeah. while I was uh, getting the harness together, I realized I don't have a way to actually accelerate the engine, and I had to find a, some sort of potentiometer. Yeah. Did they have a gas pedal or nothing? So I started to kind of, you know, just searching through the house, and I came across something. I did glass. actually have a gas pedal though. Like I, I, I had a McLaren gas pedal. Eric just didn't ask me. It was a setup. I, it was. It was. It was a setup. A, yeah. But anyway, um, I came across a, a box of all this stuff that that I have um, for me and my daughter do like science stuff. Mm -hmm. And in it was actually her controller, her RC car and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, there's a potentiometer in the RC controller. Yeah. I'll just rob it out of that. Yeah. But then I thought, I felt bad. I'm like, uh, but then I thought, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why don't I just use the RC controller <laughs> instead of taking <laughs> it apart? There you go. There. So um, now I've read the comments and guys like, you guys are like too kind, but overly kind. The, the word genius was thrown around kind of reckless. I, it I, wasn't, I didn't, I didn't say that just yeah. for, just for the, I did no, not, no, I did not say, I did comments. not say genius. If anyone calls him a genius, you take that back. Yeah. Okay. Cause take he, it, he, he does, take it, take he, it back. He doesn't enjoy that. No. That's, that's not something that well, he, he, he so, like, he's a genius by the way. No, no, yeah. but, um, but actually anybody that, you know, like any of my MoTeC contemporaries or even like, you know, first year engineering students knew exactly how mm -hmm. this works. But for those of you that don't, we'll just, for the 99.999% <laughs> of people that don't know how to do this, so, including me by the way <laughs> um i think yeah we, we can uh we can explain all right guys so one thing i've learned over the years is that working on a car is a lot like working on your own mental health all the little details matter a lot and in my own life i make sure that every little bit of stress and anxiety gets taken care of right away because that makes me happier and healthier and thankfully today's sponsor BetterHelp, can help you do exactly that so BetterHelp makes tackling any issues easier than ever. And if you use my link, betterhelp.com slash tuvarish, you can answer a couple of questions and based on your answers, they'll match you up with one of their 30,000 plus therapists who they think can help you out the most. The therapist they pick for you will have tons of experience dealing with whatever you're going through. Every single one of their therapists is licensed, has a master's or doctorate degree, and has spent over three years and a thousand hours working with people just like you. It's helped me tremendously in the past, and I certainly recommend it to anybody who thinks they need help. You are not alone. Join the four million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a happy, healthier life. And you can go to betterhelp.com slash Tuvarish or select Tuvarish at sign up to get a special discount off your first month of therapy. It is so worth it. Go check it out right now.
so what I did was the the RC controller actually comes with the receiver. It comes in a kit for you know your remote control truck whatever. Uh -huh. When um when I put this harness together, I did not want you to find out. So I actually hid the receiver in this relay box that is used for the starter and fuel pump. So now, you're giving me much more credit than I deserve because there's not one chance that I was going to go peeking around in anything. I did not want to take a chance. <laughs> it was too good of a bit. Yeah. So, oh, oh yeah. For for sure. A hundred percent. So. So if you look right here, I, I took I took the cover off, but but in the relay box I hid the receiver, mm -hmm. and this is it. It's just a little guy. Yeah. Now if you notice, there's three wires coming out of it, um, black, red, and white. Red and black is red is a uh, five volts coming from the ECU mm -hmm. to power it. Black is obviously ground, and then white. That's the secret sauce. So this is secret <laughs> sauce. <laughs> yeah. So on it's the Krabby Patty secret formula. Yes. Okay. Yes. A, a PWM or pulse wave modulated signal. Okay. So, actually, is it pulse wave modulate or pulse width? Uh, I'm sorry, pulse width. Oh, did, it was did, a long did, day. Did I, I did I just correct the Wait, genius? You're the genius. I am the I am the genius now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell everybody. So you press this thing and then that thing goes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's so late, but yes, that, that's why I said don't call me a genius. I mess up all the time. Um, <laughs> But yes, pulse width modulated signal. Now, uh, if you turn on the, if you turn on the the controller. That's right here. Boom. Yeah. So, we'll see the after it initializes, you'll see a waveform, a square wave. A square wave. Yep. There you go. Boom. Now, if you pull the trigger. Okay, we're gonna pull the trigger. Let's let's see if we can see that. All right, pull the trigger. You see, so the du the duty cycle increases. <laughs> duty. Duty. Yeah. <laughs> and if you go from the from the. Uh, the neutral position and then push forward oh. you see it decreases oh yeah there you go so so what in, i in out in out in out. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically uh so what i did is that signal actually goes into a, a digital auxiliary input into the ecu mm -hmm. um any of the guys that actually deal with ecus it's the it's the same input that you use for cam position wheel speed okay stuff like that okay you know? So it, it's just a general digital input. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I just uh, had the ECU translate it. So I did a very simple uh, like a function where, uh -huh. where if it see, so right here, it's, it's idling at about 11% duty cycle. Okay. When you push it all the way forward, it goes down to like- Oh, like that. Yeah, so it goes down to about like 8% duty cycle. Okay. So basically what I did was I programmed it where if it sees- Sorry, I'm trying to break it. Yeah. So I programmed it to where if it sees anything under 10% duty cycle, mm -hmm. it'll just turn turn on an output that engages the starter. Okay. And then that's it. And then uh, I set up a user on a 2D table for 11% uh, all the way to about 17. So a 2D table means like you have it's like a like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, right? Kind, yeah, actually, so, it so, kind so, of sort of like right. that. And then you go like if this, then this. Well, so it's a whole bunch of numbers. So uh -huh. basically, it starts off at 11% mm -hmm. and ends at 17. Okay. And then I had to translate like 11% is 0% 0, 0, 0 throttle, mm -hmm. and then 17 is 100 and all the numbers in between. Oh, okay. So when, when you pull the trigger, if you pull it slowly and not try to break it, mm -hmm. a little faster than that. But if, if you uh, pull the trigger in and out, so that would be going from a... Uh, from zero throttle to full throttle. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, and that's basically how it works, and that's all it is. Cool. There's, there's, a, there's that much more to it than that. All right. So, in order for you to do this, you also had to connect this to the ECU and connect the ECU to the engine. Let's oh, go. Yes. Let's go to the engine and talk about what you had to do to make the engine actually run. Oh, okay, cool. By the way, uh, Eric, in order to do all this and uh, put the wiring harness in and make this work. Uh, he was at his house working on this like at all hours of the night and he was laying this out in his bathroom. Yeah, yeah. so before people think that I'm kind of weird. Um, Roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Good, look at the bathtub. No. There's the yeah. bathtub. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, um, no, well, 
The reason why I use the bathroom, again, I'm trying to keep this as secret as possible. I did not want to start setting up here just, you know, because you're obviously you're a genius as well. No. I did not want you to recognize what I was doing. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to keep it a secret as much as possible. Eric, I, but, again, uh, again, you're giving me way too much. I have, there, there's, not, <laughs> there's not a chance in a billion years that I would have figured out that you were doing this. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, if I have the remote and you see, like, the so so going even and then, connected. Like, even then, you this is... There's two cockroaches playing ping pong up here, dude. Like I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's it, there's nothing going on. But so, I, so anyway, um, I had the harness, you know, the the one that you gave me to to use for this, mm -hmm. all, all cut up and set up, and I hooked up the RC controller to another couple of uh, EC. Actually, one of them's Jack's Jack's ECU at the house. Cool. Just to prove the concept. I'm like, oh, great. sorry, it sorry, works. Jack, we sorry, sorry, <laughs> we, we we borrowed your ECU. Sorry, stole it. Actually, I stole it. It was stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, mm -hmm. but after I, I proved the concept, then I actually started putting the, the ECU together or putting the harness together for the actual ECU, mm -hmm. program the actual ECU to actually run it. And there we go. As far as like the rest of the rest of the engine, um, it was, believe it or not, this is, this engine's pretty straightforward as far I, as like I, engines I, I believe it. I mean, yeah, it's, there's, not, there's not much to it. No, no, there's not. No, seriously, because um, it's not it's not direct injection, so it's pretty simple in that part. It's mm. still port injected. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about it's about as complex as like a Coyote engine being a V8, uh, uh, dual cam, dual variable cams. He just and, called uh, my P1 a Ford Mustang. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> Did you guys catch that he just called it a Ford? He said it's the same thing as a Coyote. It, it, he said it, he's it, looking it, at it. He was like, "This is a Mustang, dude. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have 1,400 horsepower in this. It's called foreshadowing. Just it, it is. It is. I'm also gonna. <laughs> there's probably it, gonna be a few holes in my block. You know, just like a Mustang would. would oh no, I'm talking about like car meets and stuff like. Oh, that. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So one one cool but, thing about this is. Um, what, what, what I liked is that uh, there are 16 fuel injectors in this engine. So it's a mm -hmm. 720S engine. And uh, the, the earlier iterations, especially the P1, had only eight. Um, so the 650S, 675, they, they all have eight injectors, mm -hmm. but uh, 720 and moving forward, they all have 16. And that's for, like, what is that for? Why, why would you have more for, injectors? So, um, so basically what they're trying to do is to get the, um, the, the injection as precise as possible. Okay. So since they're getting more power out of the engine, they're gonna have to go to bigger injectors. Now, if you if you ever look at like a drag race injector, they're freaking huge. Yeah. And they're great right. for up yeah. top, but the drivability isn't, isn't all that great. Right. Uh, so it's hard to control a bigger injector. So what McLaren did very cleverly is that they took an injector, instead of putting like a 750 cc's or 800 cc injectors mm -hmm. in here, they actually just, uh, split the load between two smaller injectors, so they put what 370, 300, 290. They're 290, even yeah. better. Yeah, 290 so, cc injectors, two per cylinder. Yeah. yeah. So by splitting by splitting the load, it causes more demand on the on the injector, which gets it away from uh, a very weird like non-linear area that all injectors have. Okay. So. So when you're talking about stuff like duty cycle and whatever, ba basically uh, the duty cycle of injector is like it gets to a point where it can no longer be efficient at what it does. Correct. So, well. So with, with injectors, if you have like two, if you're running it at too low of, of a frequency, uh, basically you get into a weird area where the injector isn't giving a linear amount of, uh, of fuel. What happens is that when the pintle goes back, it slams against the body of the injector, pushes forward a little bit, closes, closes the orifice a bit, and then opens. Mm -hmm. So you have kind of a weird area where, where the computer can't really predict how much fuel is coming out. Because there's, now, a, there's a mechanical thing yes, that happens. Yeah, there's a mechanical okay. element, but the, um, the, the, the more uh, pulse width that you put through, like the, the longer duration, you start mm -hmm. getting into like two, three, four milliseconds, it runs very, it's very predictable, it's very linear, it's very smooth. Yeah. So by actually getting, by splitting the load, uh, the, the fuel load between two injectors, you're actually running them at, uh, at a longer pulse width. Mm -hmm. And you're getting away from that really weird area and okay. you're able to keep your fueling really precise so you get the best of both worlds you you have the ability to keep it very very precise to get your crisp downshifts and stuff like that because yeah. you need that especially on on a on a setup like this it's only upshifts on this but yeah, well, there's we're, we're, downshift. We're i mean we're you, never going to downshift you you may never downshift. where 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 i'm going we're not going to need downshifting. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah but it allows you to have your cake and eat it too you get your your very precise throttle control mm -hmm. at the same time you're able to deliver the fuel needed to support what 
I guess what was this supposed to be like 720 horsepower, 750, Some, something or? like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's basically why. And you're doubling your points of failure. Yeah, ah, isn't that great? I mean, uh, <laughs> and also if you need to replace them. There's a lot more money. You You're have doubling the size of your Dude, wallet. You doubling can, the size of you your bill. If you can afford a P1, you can. I can't. <laughs> I can't. That's why we're here. That's why we're. <laughs> that's why we have this. We have the RC controller. That's why you, I can't afford one of these. That's why you have Cannonball Garage. <laughs> that's right. We have Cannonball Garage because, like, you know, this is yeah. this is crazy. But so, so, so that's yeah. so that that's it. That's why. Well, um, just, a, just a quick primer on how injectors work. Um, you know, what you said, uh, like there's, there's basically a pintle uh, and a, like there's a spring in there, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, and then it's like a, it's, is it electromagnetic, something like that? Yeah. yeah. So basically a magnet um, opens, think about it as uh, opening a valve. And that valve allows for a certain amount of fuel to come out. And uh, the, the amount of time that that valve is open determines how much fuel is coming out. And this is like very, very small. Like it's, you know, milliseconds. Milliseconds, yeah, yes. absolutely. So if, that, if that's too small, sometimes it's just that weird area where you don't, you, you can't really control it because the pencil's doing this and it's like, you know, it, there's just a physical uh, reaction happening. So it's really cool tech. Um, I, I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's also... It must be said, we didn't use 16 injectors to fire this engine up. No, we didn't need to. No, we didn't need to because we're all we did we needed to do was idle the engine mm -hmm. and rev it, rev it up. So yeah. I mean, how much horsepower was the engine producing realistically at that rev? Oh up? man, e even at the rev up, maybe like you know 200 or something for like we're talking for a very very small small amount of time. 200 horsepower just, on my, on my just, P1 Evo. That's that's no, good. No, no, but we're we're talking like milliseconds. It it, it doesn't matter, you know. It yeah. doesn't matter. It has still happened. Just just a rev it, but idling you're probably making a like like 20 25 horse if the, if that. I will. Yeah. Cool. So we can uh, we can run a lawnmower off this thing, but uh, it dude it sounded great. Um. So one thing happened during. One of the startups. Oh yeah, so yeah. This is this which which gave me like like I needed to change my pants immediately. Uh, yeah, okay. Tommy, you can you can you can put that in. Three, two, one. Okay, so you see what ha happened was. Uh -huh. What happened was, <laughs> yeah. Um, because I was trying to keep it under wraps of what we were doing. There mm -hmm. was two tables. There was a table for uh, for a manual throttle, which I was using a throttle body as a gas pedal. Yes, you were. Yeah. So like, if if anybody watches it when, when the first time that it revs up before he actually has a controller, you see me kind of lean out the shot. And I'm leaning over and I'm. I'm um, uh, turning a, a throttle body using the TPS as a gas pedal, and, I'm, and I rev, rev up the engine a couple times. We also took that from Jack, by the way. Yeah, we, we, we stole we, that we from stole Jack, that from Jack too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so after I verified that, there, there's another table for the RC. Now, mm -hmm. because I was keeping it under wraps, I could never actually test it or mm -hmm. anything like that. Uh, but what I didn't realize, instead of having it go from like 5% to 100, the first cell was at 20%. Okay, cool. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and, it, ha um, it happens to everybody. <laughs> you know, I just, I just had a little, you know, a little moment. Yep. Uh, but we turned it off. Everything's fine. The engine's good. And engine's you didn't have right. a heart attack. I didn't. I almost did. I mean. I almost did. You know? My butt had a moment. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, no, but it was, it was great. I, I, I learned what it sounded yeah. like at 5,000 RPM. Oh, was, yeah, yeah. Was, it, was dope. it sounded great. It sounded great. Yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it wanted more. All right. So, Eric, this is, I mean, the, it's the first P1 engine you've ever worked on. Uh, yes. Uh, same. Um, but how did you do this without any documentation? Because uh, I actually do have the wiring harness for this, but I... I did not give it to Eric. Like oh, I, the wiring I, diagram. The wiring, yeah, the, the wi wiring diagram uh, for the. I'm sorry, the wiring diagram for this. I didn't give it to Eric, and I all I gave him was like a spare wiring harness for the for the engine, that I think I just found. Like it, I, it, by the grace of God, I just found one, and you figured out what every single wire does. How did you yeah. do that, without having well, the engine? By the way. Well, so I mean. In your bathroom. 
Yeah, and, and my, do we got to keep talking about at that? Three in the morning, <laughs> at three in the morning in his bathroom. At three in the morning in the bathtub. Do we in got, the bathtub. Do we got to keep talking about that? He's the Gordon's fisherman. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I got the jacket in the car. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so basically, it's kind of like, a, you know, if you worked with one engine, you work with them all. It, it's not okay. <laughs> no, agree to um, disagree, no, but no, okay. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but seriously, uh, uh, everything that's going on here is actually the same as like a lot of other engines. So, like, if you look over here, you have your your cam, cam position sensors. Mm -hmm. If you let look at like your your 430 or even like like we're talking about a Coyote earlier, mm -hmm. you'll see like cam position sensors right there. Um, your crank position sensor on this, it's towards the back, but it's a pretty standard looking sensor. Okay. Uh, even down to like the throttle bodies. This is a, a standard uh, Bosch type throttle body. It's, you find this on, on Porsche. Is it actually, um, this is the same throttle body as like, uh, I think the pinouts like the same as a Ford Escape. I've, yeah, I learned yeah. that from, from doing Jack's Noble. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. They, they use that Bosch throttle body yes. on literally everything. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's how I was able to get the, I already knew the pinout for the throttle body. The, um, the coils, those are actually Nissan coils. So I just looked up the, the pinout for uh, the Nissan coils. I think I used the, the should pinout be, for 2007 Sentra. It I should think. be a Sentra or Reversa. Yeah, 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 like one of those. So that's, yeah. that's how I was able uh, to do that. This, this combination um, uh, fuel, fuel temp and pressure sensor, it's actually it's pretty common. I, I've seen these in a, in a bunch of aftermarket applications, so I already had the pinout for that. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, long story short, there's a lot of stuff on here, in, including like, for example, the, the, the map sensor that you find in a bunch of different other cars. And after doing this for so long, you kind of recognize, oh yeah, this and mm -hmm. that. And there, you know, the, the only thing that I couldn't really figure out was um, I didn't know the pinout for the crank. I was able to figure out what the power was, yeah. but I couldn't figure out signal and ground. Yeah. So I just left the wires where I can swap them. I cranked it up the first time, didn't get the signal, so I swapped them around, uh -huh. cranked it up, and then I got the signal. Like great. Yeah. You wait and for the smoke to come out, and, yes, then, and then you yes, go, "Whoa, yes. that was bad." That, that, or five thousand RPM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Five thousand. If it's yeah. it his five thousand RPM, yeah. you know you got it. Well, I'm glad that you didn't leave a zero in there. It was like fifty thousand <laughs> RPM. Yeah, that, that would have been bad. Yeah, it turns into, into a real RC car. Oh yeah. 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 So, but but that was it, and um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. I'm, again, I really appreciate you know. You let me uh, have a whack at it. <laughs> and there's a start, like this car doesn't have a starter. So how did you get that to oh, work? Oh, that threw yeah. me for a loop. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> well, I mean the, the the starter we the the engine harness yes. did come from uh, a, you know a 720, which does have a starter, um, but it's still you know it's mm. not on the same harness, right? Actually, this it was. No, actually, it was on the engine harness. Oh, so, really? Yeah, for the 720, it did have it for the starter as well. So it oh, was, so it's, it's easy. It's not, it was no actually, problem. It, was it ain't pretty, no problem. It was pretty easy. Okay, it ain't no problem. So, yeah, yeah and that was... And what took you so was, long? What happened? Well, it's, 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 it's all easy. You just plug it in, and you just bleep bloop, oh, and like, oh, oh, what, what's oh, going on? sorry, man. I was I was talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was that's pretty much it. Uh, so, if you ever want... So, kids, if you ever want to... No, I'm just Rebuild sorry. your P1... Uh, just so, know that you, with a, a, how much did this, like this and the controller cost? Oh God, we got that a long time ago. I think she was like eight years old when we got it. Um, okay. So I mean, th actually, this, this doesn't seem expensive. <laughs> I, I, you know what? The, I'll the RC you. guys in the comments would probably, I'm, I'm guessing like maybe a hundred. I, I have no idea. I can't remember. So for a hundred dollars, you too can have your own very, your, your very own McLaren, uh, RC controller for your rebuild project and all it takes is this all it takes is doing doing this to your car and then yep so and, that's and, and find some friend that you can you know help have a heart attack so. exactly exactly yeah. find find some good friends so um that, that's cool all right now the engine runs we know um that it has there's an oiling issue but uh i believe we solved it because we had uh the oil restrictors put in. Uh, so all the oil that was in there, I think that was just residual oil and what, whatever it was burning off that is was residual. Is this still in there? Probably, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't taken it out. It's, there's, it's probably a little oily in there, but that's okay, that's okay. That's what happens when we do things for the first time. And uh, you know, this is a lot of world firsts, but uh, dude, thank you so much, this was, this was fantastic. Um, in, yeah. Thank, 
thank you for allowing me the opportunity to to not only like play with your car, but also play with your emotions. There we go. You know, you, you know <laughs> he plays with the car and he plays with the heart. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh dude this is this is fantastic this is the coolest right. thing i've ever seen so um definitely go uh check out eric i'll link uh his uh instagram in the link in the video description below uh yeah go go check it out yeah yeah you're, yeah, yeah, you're, no, you're, no, you're, no, you're a dapper young man <laughs> yeah. but um yeah this is awesome in the next episode on the p1 i don't know when that's going to be but we have a lot of work to do so we have to get the actual harness that uh, uh we have to put that in and then test it and because that's there's a lot there that we need to go through then we need to do body work and uh basically just button up every single thing that goes into a two million dollar hypercar which is gonna be a lot uh so uh keep a keep an eye out for that sounds like a piece of cake yeah sounds like a piece of cake so how how long you want to stay tonight <laughs> oh man you know it's been fun but uh uh-huh okay so, so <laughs> bye bye everyone bye.